On September 28, 2005, Jie Fu Huang, ex-Vice Minister of Health in China, while performing an autologous liver transplant at the first teaching hospital in Xinjiang Medical University, contacted the first affiliated hospital of the Sun Yat-sen University of Medical Sciences in Guangzhou, Guangdong Province, and the third military medical university affiliated with Southwest Hospital in Chongqing. As a failsafe, he requested the preparation of a backup liver of the same blood type as the patient with liver cancer. The next day at 6.30 p.m., two backup livers arrived at the same operating room almost simultaneously. Later, Jie Fu Huang declared the operation was a success and no backup livers were necessary. Whoa! So efficient! Great work! But this raises a few questions. For starters, there was a call one day and a liver was delivered the next. And this happened twice. He ordered two, as if making some kind of grocery list. But this is human life. Second, the backup livers last no more than 12 hours once removed from their bodies, and they have to be transported from Guangzhou and Chongqing to Xinjiang, which is quite a distance. There are long waits for a liver transplant in every country around the world. How can the hospitals in China obtain two extra livers so quickly? Where do they come from? But Chinese officials say they always obtain organs from death row inmates. But... Are there really so many death row inmates? In 2006, two Canadian human rights lawyers, David Kilgore and David Matus, published an investigation containing 52 pieces of evidence, indicating that the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, has been carrying out widespread organ harvesting from Falun Gong prisoners of conscience. This evidence includes testimony from a military hospital employee possessing insider information and from the ex-wife of a doctor responsible for illegal organ harvesting. An armed guard from an organ transplant site, a systematic telephone survey, testimonies from Falun Gong practitioners. No, this is the most terrible thing! The CCP has been persecuting Falun Gong practitioners since July of 1999. The escalation of the brutal persecution coincides with the skyrocketing number of organ transplants. According to the investigation, not only had the prisoners in the labor camps been enslaved, beaten, and tortured, but they also had their blood samples taken frequently. Right. So after being pummeled to the edge of death, the kind labor camp guards take an interest in the health of the victim. So they run a blood test. Here is a fact. A live organ database has already been built. Some doctors even carry a death list to discuss with patients about which one to choose. Oh, hey, that's just like picking your own lobster at a restaurant. Uh, this one is bigger. I want this one. <gasps> okay, I can't stand it anymore. This is gross. The patients are usually cheated into believing that death row inmates are about to be executed. It would a be a waste if the inmate. organs are burnt to ashes, so they either use it or lose it. The truth is, those chosen for their organs are sent to be harvested to death. Those who are not chosen remain imprisoned. Wow, everyone is deceived by the Chinese government believing the organs are salvaged from the death row inmates. But how can this be? I have a hard time believing this. Why isn't it all over the news? If you don't believe it, then tell me. Where do these organs and where does this transplant industry originate from? Is there any explanation more reasonable? Mm, that's right. Evildoers cover their tracks as soon as they commit crimes. If a government does evil, then it has the largest resources to cover up the truth. Since 2000, the number of organ transplants has risen greatly, and the transplant industry has skyrocketed rapidly. Amnesty International has established that death row inmates are killed in China at a rate of about 1,700 per year. Yet the official registered liver and kidney transplants are over 10,000 per year. Where do all these organs come from? There's lots of people selling their organs. I've seen it in the newspaper. Hey, look at this. This one's great. One can survive after selling one of his own kidneys. But after removing his liver, he will definitely die. Liverless man? According to official records, liver transplants can be over 4,000 a year, 
yet no one would sell a liver for money. The large-scale organ transplants carried out by the CCP for decades have been sourced from the shockingly large numbers of illegally imprisoned Falun Gong practitioners, and also from House Church members, Tibetans, civil rights activists, and others. They are tortured, made to do hard labor, and given blood tests. And then, for the profit of the Communist Party's politicians and military, their organs are harvested killing them in the process of creating a fresh supply for paying transplant recipients. Wow, what kind of fiends could do this? This bloody organ harvesting, it, it kills the victims. It really is a new form of evil known to man. This is too brutal. Consequently, this has raised global attention. To receive an organ acquired from a non-consensual donor, the main legislative body of the United States, Canada, Australia, Israel, and the EU have all passed resolutions to condemn the organ harvesting carried out by the CCP. But in Taiwan, many people go to mainland China to replace their livers and kidneys. The prevalence of terminal kidney disease in Taiwan ranks first in the world, where there are over 80,000 people requiring dialysis. However, only 200 kidney donations are made per year. Therefore, some people go to mainland China to obtain kidney transplants. But getting such an organ operation in China, that's murder! The Taiwanese legislative body has amended the Human Organ Transplantation Act today to deter illicit organ sales. Those who are found guilty could be sentenced to five years maximum imprisonment and fined 10,000 to 50,000 US dollars. The legislation has amended the Human Organ Transplantation Act to prohibit the sale of organs from unknown sources. The amended act expresses that organs for transplants must be provided or received gratuitously. If those who purchase transplant organs overseas are found guilty of receiving an illicit organ, the maximum sentence is five years and the maximum fine is 50,000 US dollars on the accused. Additionally, doctors involved in illegal organ transplants could lose their license. Therefore, the legislation has passed a resolution to express the government's concern regarding the prisoners of conscience in China, Falun Gong practitioners, house church members, Tibetans, Uyghurs, civil rights activists, etc. The legislation has also condemned the PRC government as appalling and intolerant by the course of nature in regards to harvesting organs from Falun Gong practitioners and death row inmates for profiteering transplantation. Oh, come on, you're kidding me. The CCP isn't the same as it used to be. The economic reform has made everyone rich over there. Daddy, I've earned millions. Oh, send it home quickly once you've got it. I sure will, Dad. The government used to spend money to kill people. Now it's profiteering through persecution and organ harvesting. In the past, it could only block the information domestically. Now it's applying various methods of media infiltration and distraction to twist the information globally through a campaign of disinformation. So evil! The vile Chinese Communist Party! How dare it! The CCP is an unprecedented evil on this planet. If you choose to be silent, then silently share this video with others. <laughs>